you talk about, uh, you know, basically speeding up processing of data, dealing with all that, there are some computers around that are already very fast. I mean, simply using the internet on a daily basis when you live in an area with, uh, you know, very strong uh, broadband internet, uh, it's already very fast. So when you say it speeds it up exponentially, what are we talking about? We are talking about being able to to bring that fast to an exponentially faster uh, time uh, ren duration that it needs to compute. So uh, there is a recent example that was uh, uh, demonstrated uh, by the Google team and, and collaborators and, and they showed that uh, by using 53 superconducting qubits, so qubits that were assembled to, to, to operate in a quantum uh, computer, they realized in 200 seconds a complex operation to, uh, that would take 10,000 years on a classical computer. So you can have an idea of how fast uh, it will be. And, and this exponential uh, decrease of the time that is needed for a computation is actually received the name. It is called the quantum supremacy. Now, it is a very discussed and very debated notion because Maybe there is a classical computer that could be faster than this 10,000 years that is uh, reported by Google. And indeed, when they published the paper, this was discussed a lot, right? Is it really quantum supremacy? But the bottom line is that, for example, we will be able to factorize an integer with a large number of digits or to decide if a number is a prime or not in a time that is sufficiently short that all the encryption of data that is nowadays in place will just be irrelevant. And so it means that when quantum computer will become available, we will need to find new ways of encrypting data because otherwise not a single communication. You talked about internet, emails, but also more important when we use our credit card, all this communication will become completely non-secure, actually. So every, every solution or every development uh, creates new challenges that uh, quantum physics or quantum mechanics hopefully can help us. Let, let us dream a little bit, uh, because we had this uh, example before with the cloud passing through the wall. You already mentioned that you and I, we are uh, far too heavy uh, in order to be able to, to have this kind of property, to be able to do that. But what about the idea of teleportation, uh, about moving an object or maybe even a being like in Star Trek, be me up Scotty, in the long term, is that, could this be reality? It's not clear it can be a reality for a macroscopic object, but teleportation again exploits the property of being in a superposition of state. So it's, it's the same property that is exemplified by the Schrödinger cat. And it has been demonstrated, and I will tell you in which circumstances, and again at the atomic scale. I mean, so when we go down in, in lengths of lengths and of mass and of time. So the, the idea of teleportation is now to build special specific superposition of state for systems that are made at least of two quantum particles. And this special uh, superposition allow to for example, if one of the particles that is part of the system is localized at a given place in time and the other particle is localized in another uh, place uh, at a given time, if one observer makes a measurement on the particle that is in region A, let's say, he will completely determine the measurement will completely determine the measurement that is made on uh, the particle that is in region B. So there is a complete correlation between the two states of the two particles that compose the pair of particles. And this is called the entanglement property. This is called to build an entangled superposition of state. And it's really a consequences of the superposition principle, but also 
on how a measurement is made uh, on a superposition of state in quantum mechanics. And so teleportation can be measured, has been uh, realized uh, on photons. And it uh, has been shown uh, by, by a team of scientists uh, at the NASA that it was possible to uh, send two photons that are the pair of particles in opposite direction and to, to keep this special correlation between the states of the photon in the superposition, this property of entanglement, such that uh, it survives over 44 kilometers. So if one receiver makes uh, an ex uh, test the state of one of the photon at zero in terms of kilometer, it determines the measurement that will be made 40 kilometer, 44 kilometers later by the second observer. This also has been done on, on, over much longer distances, but then one has to use satellite. So the ch a Chinese team in uh, just last year, in 2020, reported that they were able, using a low orbited satellite where they generate a pair of entangled photons, so that have this particular superposition of state where the state of the two photons are fully correlated, they send them from, from this low orbiting satellite in opposite direction. And this entanglement property was still measurable by two receivers that were distanced by, by 1,100 uh, one kilometers. Let's not ex exaggerate. And so, and this is possible because here, instead of traveling in an optical fiber, the two photons uh, travel in space and they are subject to less perturbation. Just one more example because photons uh, are, are special particles, but you can also do it with electrons. And so there is a team uh, in TU Delft that uh, showed that you can measure this entanglement property on a pair of electrons on a distance on, of one kilometer, which is also a very big uh, record uh, for then particle of the kind of electron. So teleportation is not really close to reality for very big object, but it is surely exploited uh, for quantum system and it's a reality. I mean, it is measured. So let's, let's talk about quantum applications, uh, because it would be interesting to know how uh, quantum technology actually impacts our daily life. Quantum applications are of two kinds. Well, I can use quantum mechanics and, and qubits uh, to process tasks uh, that have to do, for example, with uh, deciding if uh, an integer that has a large number of digits uh, is a prime number or not, or to decide if the same kind of integers, so with a large number of digits, uh, to, to factor it. But there are another uh, range of applications that have to do by with quantum simulations. And in quantum simulation, what people are trying to do is to implement what Feynman said uh, in his famous talk, it is to use a quantum computer to simulate a quantum system. And then one can, using a quantum computer, simulate very complex quantum system like molecules or even a biological system like uh, protein, a fragment of DNA, systems that are a very complex uh, assembly of electron and nuclei that are interacting, what is known in physics as a many-body problem. And there, quantum computers will really allow us to understand better where quantum phenomena like interference effects, so effect that comes from the wave particle uh, nature of, of matter at the atomic scale and from the fact that I can associate a wavelength to a particle, so that leads to interference and to experimental manifestation of this wave nature of a particle, if this phenomena play a role 
in biological process. And for example, scientists are now uh, working to try to understand if interference effects are important for the efficiency of the conversion of the energy of the photon that are emitted by the sun to chemical energy in bones. And this is known as the photosynthesis uh, in biology. Another important aspect is if coherence play a role in the transmission of electrical waves in synapses. And this has to do about how our brain functions. So quantum computer could explain or could help to understand where the effect of quantum mechanics occur in biological system. And then we can use this understanding to improve technology, like, for example, if we understand the role of interference in energy conversion from, from photon to, to chemical energy or to electrical energy, we will build more uh, efficient photovoltaic cells, which is right now a big issue in, in view of the climate change. So you see, we have really two ranges. Either we use quantum computers to solve very complicated mathematical problem or very complicated logistic problem. So to, to use the power of quantum computer to, to process very quickly um, big data, essentially. Or we use them as simulators to better understand the quantum mechanics of complex many body systems. And this is this field this, that I am more interested in because I am trying to, in my research, to understand co coherence effect and the role of interference uh, when uh, a molecule evolves in time. Well, Francoise, uh, let's just uh, look ahead. Where do you see quantum technology in, let's say, 10, 15 years from now? I think in, in closer than 10, 15 years, in five years, we will have a lot of quantum sensing uh, in every today life and uh, there is the, the sensing that we can use uh, for biology for example which is very important all the part uh, that can be implemented to to better detect uh, molecules so with higher precision important for for cancer important for understanding how aging occurs right in, in the population all kind of uh, very important health uh, issues Sensing is also very important for space and uh, we have developed uh, this quantum gravimeter uh, that allows to, to measure gravitation, to better observe the, observe the Earth and then uh, we can get a better understanding of a lot of uh, processes that occurs on Earth and of course the climate change is a very important uh, issue. On the longer term, like 10, 15 years, quantum computers will become available. And uh, then it will be a real revolution because communication will not be secured anymore because of this exponential increase in computational capabilities that is brought by quantum computers. And so we will have to encrypt our communication using also quantum technologies and to better develop and bring to really technical application quantum key distribution protocols. And this will be an enormous change because we, we use communication uh, all the time uh, nowadays uh, by various channels. Another part is that uh, in, in my field, uh, we will have the possibility to use quantum computers to do quantum simulation, that is to simulate the quantum properties of very complex system. And this is also, uh, this will also be a, a complete change because right now we are very limited by the, the possibilities and the capabilities of uh, classical computer and we cannot probe or calculate the quantum nature of very large system, very large molecules, uh, assemblies of atoms. And quantum computer will allow us to, to better understand and to go probably to a third quantum revolution, I would think.
Well, Professor uh, François Remarkel, thank you so much uh, for your time, for taking the time to exploring uh, quantum technology, the nature and the application of quantum technology with us. And uh, now that we know that there'll even be a, a third quantum revolution, it's good that we had this interview to catch up on what's already been done. And uh, I, for one, I'm uh, going back to the title at the beginning when we said quantum technologies, uh, imagination or reality, a role for space. I would say in quantum logics, imagination and reality, not all reality, and certainly a role for space. So thank you so much and I'm very glad that we've got this taped. Thank you for watching uh, and I'm sure you can review this video in order to really understand absolutely everything that was said. It was, it's worth it. Uh, in the meantime, obviously stay safe.